to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. It's Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and the emotional oranges. Yeah. Are you? It's a very emotional fruit. <laughs> um, we should start there. <laughs> uh, we have Valley and Azad. Yes, sir. Yes. Hi. Um, how long have you guys been the emotional oranges as a group? Ninety-five years. Wow! Oh. Yeah. Since two thousand nineteen, <laughs> <laughs> you deal with this a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. She, though. she exaggerates. She's the you know, real the she's emotional. The you're, you're, she's the, big she's the emotional. You're the orange. Is that how it works? Sometimes we flip flop. How do we land on emotional oranges? Uh, marijuana. Yeah, lots of pot. That, that was <laughs> dope. A, yeah. Was that a strain or it was just an idea that came from pot? I just feel like we're both emotional as shit. Oops, sorry, no cursing. Um, it happened already. And, you know, like I said, I'm from L.A., so I feel like the funk shit is, like, the vibrant colors. Sunsets. Um, sunsets, yeah. Yeah, and New York is, you know, full of layers. There we go, peel it back. Yeah. Okay. Like an orange. I like it. I like it. So explain to the audience that hasn't experienced your music. We're going to play a new single, though, but um, explain to them what type of music you're making, like... Like, how would you describe it? Because it is a hybrid of things. I saw a blog post, uh, New Funk, yesterday. Okay. I thought that was really ill. Mm. I feel like we've kind of blended a lot of, like, the Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis yep. era stuff. I like this. With um, Quick. That whole argument on Twitter yesterday that he started was ill. I feel like he doesn't get enough praise. DJ, DJ Quick. DJ specifically Quick. his tweet about Dr. Dre, but not beefing well, what was with DJ? Dre. I, I missed yeah. this. Quick was basically saying that Doc, he should be where Dr. Dre is. Because without of, saying that, yeah. Without saying that. And also was just very like Dre's, I, I love Dre, like he was very much that, but, you know, uh, yeah, that's a different convo. But anyway, yes. Interesting though. Okay. Quick, yeah. is, quick as a musician. Right. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. He's way too funky. You know what I mean? That was terrible. Correct me if I'm wrong. When you guys first came out, I remember because um, you guys were kind of incognito, right? You were letting the music speak for yourself. Yeah. So tell me about that decision. Why? I think we wanted to create a world. I think a lot of music now is very artist forward facing. So you see the artists and then you hear the music. So you're like judging the world based off of that. Mm -hmm. We wanted to reverse engineer it. So you're hearing the music. We're setting a tone. We're letting our art drive the music and the project. And if you want to see us, you come to our show. Right. Not, you're not falling in love with the brand. You're falling in love with the music. The world, yeah. Or you're not listening. You know, we talk about people, they listen with their eyes. Right. That's a problem a lot of people have where they they look at something and decide whether or not they like it before they actually... It's like going to a restaurant blindfolded. Right. It's also nice to be able to go to the grocery store, just like be a regular human. I feel like for the first couple years, like our anonymity was our protection. And you got to be real vulnerable in the social media era to like be that forward facing. And I feel like the music was already very dense. So... Yeah, I feel like it's, you know, it took a few years. Um, it gave us a chance to, like, figure out who we were in this space. And how did you guys come together as a group? Uh, my best friend growing up was dating Val. And yeah, she would just be at the crib, you know, and we got in for 30 minutes one day and wrote a song. Um, and from there, it was just off to the races. You were both already musicians on your own? Yeah. Okay. So this is all a music hangout world that you're, you're in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you still friends? You you guys still friends? Uh, not right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, Yo, you're I messy as hell. Yeah. You <laughs> went right toxic, to, bro. You went right to the. <laughs> no, it was a fair How question. do you not ask that no, question? No, no, bro. listen. It was totally. My friend was her boyfriend. <laughs> no, you had to. Now yeah. we're in a group. I'm just. Are you still in the relationship? Absolutely not. No. Absolutely okay. not. Not well, just hey, no. Hey, it didn't hey, work shout, out. Shout out to Ray. Without Ray, we're not here. You know, he has great taste. He put us together. Clean up. Very he, adult. He realized, Very mature. Clean I like up this. on aisle seven. <laughs> no, She's he, not letting it go. He he saw that, you know, I had a yeah. vision when it came to, like, writing and producing. And she's, like, the illest performer I've ever met in my life. And together, it was just, like, Voltron type shit. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're and so toxic. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do it, though. No, it was, I wouldn't have done it. That's what makes me a bad bad at my job. <laughs> You're good. You went right no, You were mess. looking at me thinking it, though. You're I like, was like, <laughs> yeah, no, I thought I was like, interesting. That's interesting. But you, of course, that was good. You can, you have if, to. If you don't want this to be a part of the convo, you, have you to don't take it out. Out. Yeah, you have to take it out. Well, no, we met through a mutual friend, and we right. really hit it off. Like, you could have yeah, glossed over that so you, easy. You did do it, yeah. You yeah. Said, no, I kind of set myself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I just gave him the alley, and he just, like, slid that shit. the last time you Oh, yeah. wait, oh, hold, hold on, on, hold on. Uh, Rory, uh, Rory. Oh, we have a 
have a special <laughs> guest on the program from the Mike. Rory and Maul <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Who would like to add in some more uh, color here? Wait, Rory, he give him the mic, he Laura was Stiles. Itching, itching. Go ahead. Uh, who talked to Ray last? I did. No, nah, he, he hit me. Oh, last week. Ho, ho, shit! <laughs> he hit me last no week. Play. Just on, just on some funny shit on DM. It wasn't like anything serious. I saw him in person. Right. Yeah. But we're cool. we're cool. Ray, look, you're getting. We're talking about you more than we're talking about our music. Bro. That's not That's how you true. Know it's Is Ray a musician? No, no, but no. he has great taste. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, so it's all positive. It's all positive. Yeah. It's all positive. Yeah, it's positive. Let's talk yeah. about Valley's outfit for a second, because earlier she said, and I quote, she was like, I'm from California. It's no, really I'm from New York. I mean, I'm from New York. Yeah. I'm living in California. But now that I'm used to living in California, I'm cold. That's why I had to wear this. Yes. Yeah, and I just want to know how we landed on that specifically, because you could have went like champion sweatshirt. You know no, what I mean? No, because... I wanted to feel like a bird. <laughs> See? Mm. And that's why I asked. Because I figure that. Wait, do you guys want to laugh? Wait, which bird? This swan. Is, a swan. This is this is Kerwin's. Very elegant. It is Kerwin. Yo, shout out to Kerwin. This is a Kerwin Frog. Adidas piece. Yeah. Wow. No, it's the, oh, this is a Kerwin piece? Yeah. yeah. Mage. Yo, you were in the yo. full Kerwin fit? Yo, Beautiful. man. Wow. And she's hey, modeling Kerwin runway style. Adidas. <laughs> wow. And some Pradas, too. She's flexing. <laughs> that is definitely more... Newborn, newborn duck yeah. swan <laughs> than it is like full grown swan, yeah, right? Because like aren't swan. when swans born, they're not the they're not there there they're yet. They're not there yet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's more the newborn fresh out the egg, right? Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There oh you my go. god. So um, I got uh, I went back into your music after Juice Box. I think was the one. Oh, wow. Because I'm a big fan of Channel Thress and they and, like, people that you featured on Juicebox. Obviously, Rory had, was like, yo, I got a thing, and they're fire. Check it out. And so then I had to kind of go learn. Um, but I think there's more to you guys than just a group, right? Like, mm. you said she's the greatest performer that you've ever seen. Yeah, you outside, said, outside of Prince. I'm just putting that out yeah, there. But, yeah, but yeah. and then you... Chill, you ain't Prince. I know. Okay. I Not know. yet. I mean, she has all the... You got time, though. You got, you got all time. time in the world. You got time. Yeah. You got time. But um, <laughs> you guys wrote a song. You produced a song. So yeah. clearly prior to becoming artists, you were in the game doing something, right? Like, were mm. you guys like... Were you a songwriter? Were you producing for other people? What was the path? Let's start with you, Valerie. Um, we're both artists. Okay. I was an artist. I actually went to LaGuardia High School, so I'm a performer. Oh, like, there you go. I did theater, I did acting, I did dancing, and then I moved to L.A., basically just packed my stuff, went there, slept on a couple couches, got in a couple sessions, and started building myself as a songwriter and an artist. And then luckily, I met a producer who knew how to utilize my talent. Mm -hmm. Very important. Yeah. Basically, you're Quincy Jones, in a way. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, wow. Quincy and Prince. This is where we're at right now. <laughs> well, I mean, jump right in, huh? Relatively I see, I see the clickbait title already. <laughs> yeah. You could have started. Emotional like, Oranges <laughs> thinks they're Quincy Jones. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you could have started with like Pete Rock and CL Smooth. You're like, it's easy well, way into Quincy and Michael. Well, thank I do. Yeah. And, but so what you just said, I but, think, yeah. is one of the biggest misses in most artists. Agreed. Path to finding themselves yeah. is either a they don't meet the person. That instantly click, or they're not even looking for the right. person, or they're Sometimes resistant, they to the or person. they're resistant yeah. to people even giving them insight. And yeah. so, I have talked to, and mostly it's usually rappers about like, yo, you got bars, like you you could rap, but who's your Quincy Jones? Like mm -hmm. who's gonna yeah. bring out the musicality? Who's gonna help you find your voice? Who's gonna push you to be better? Who's gonna yeah. put the stuff around you to make you? actually listenable but beyond just punchlines and metaphors you know what i'm saying so yeah. preachy bro it's pretty important just holding court Wait, so what here, was baby. your is that what was your path then so i actually came up as an artist too uh in the early 2010s i was singing opening, rapping uh, a bit of both okay. producing singing rapping um i'd opened up for like everyone from kendrick to most def and oh, i so signed you was outside you was, yeah, out was here really outside around, yeah um i was at that southpaw show in brooklyn when kendrick was there yeah. i was like it was back in those days but I signed a really bad production deal. And uh, long story short, I couldn't release music. So I went on the other side and I helped build this independent label called Mind of a Genius where we signed they and we signed Gallant and Zoo. Gallant's and I did that fire, for a few Zoo's years. Um, and I just think I re kind of framed what it meant for my artistry, uh, what my vision was. And I understood, I understood production from a different perspective. I think growing up, I thought I was making beats. 
and I was around, like, you know, my favorite producer in the world is Dante Jones from Day. And I say this all the time. I feel like uh, understanding how to, like, just being really self-aware and being like, sure, you could play the keys or you could do this, but if you know somebody that can execute your vision better and you could be a conductor, um, for the music that I wanted to make, I felt like that's what it took. It took just checking my ego at the door. Yeah. So I, I really feel like my strength, especially in this group, is curation. You know, I'm obviously writing the songs with her. I'm, I'm doing all that, but uh, creating the environment. That's what I feel like I'm doing really well right now. Mm. I love it. Emotional Oranges, um, go look for them. Uh, their last project was 2021. No, and they have a new, you have a new project. Just, yeah. It's coming out tomorrow. tonight at 9 p.m. Yeah, tonight. Yes. I was oh going to get to that. But, okay, okay. And, sorry, and sorry. we're independent now, and there's a whole lot of conversation that needs to be had around what it takes to even get up here and be independent and sell these tickets. Well, Azad is leading the convo, but if you want to go look at... They got juice, the Juice Volume One, the Juice Volume Two, the Juice Box, the Juice Box, <laughs> and then about to drop tonight is called Juice Volume Three. There you volume go, Volume Three. Yeah. Boom. Uh, you put out "Let Me Go" the single back on December second. Last um, Friday. That's just the yeah, other day. Right? That was literally yeah. last week. Yeah. Yeah, last week. Um, let's talk about it, Azad. You you said you're independent now. Who were you signed to before? Um, so we have a label called Avant Garden, and it was going through Island and Universal. Okay. And we work with artists like Child. We help produce Rory's project, obviously the Emotional Oranges stuff. We work with they. Rory um, the podcaster or Rory the artist? Well, Rory the podcaster is also an, an artist, artist. Yeah, but with a great vision. So. You, you don't actually go with the word artist though yourself, do you? Uh, formerly known. For <laughs> I'm the prince of. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Wait, what is he? What does he make? Known as a podcast. What does Rory so, the podcaster so make? I would say I know like he a, put together an album, but I thought it was like a, a, a over overseeing yeah, kind of but, compilation. No, but he's, I think he's a little more involved than he gives himself credit for. I mean, he's like in the room helping write these records, helping produce the records. I feel like we're just we're all kind of learning a lot from each other. And uh, it's that Voltron thing. So he's a creative. When you say he's an artist, he's a creative. He knows absolutely. How to yeah, yeah. He can sit there and give you notes on a mix. I feel like most producers still can't do. Most beat makers can't tell you how to mix right, vocals. Right, right. Yeah, you know. So, um, um, and so you said you wanted to discuss what it takes to get up here and be an independent. I'm not trying to be like you know last man standing vibes. I think uh, it's just it's incredibly difficult to build a healthy, sustainable business. And I feel like in 2022, it's like viral or bust. But mm -hmm. there's a really healthy middle class of artists. And once again, it just goes back to, are you able to check your ego at the door? And, um, and I think we realized really early on that we had this connection with the fans. They were buying tickets. We were making candles and vinyl and shirts. They were buying all you the merch. We have a real business. We have a real yeah. business that we're building on the side of the streaming stuff. And then when we understood, well, you're signed to an 80, if you, even if you're on an 80, 20 with a label, then they give you a hundred grand. You got to give them back 500 grand. That's right. And so with the economics, it just wasn't something that like, you're not going to be able to leave stuff behind for your kids. And, um, and I think once, you know, as like a 29, 30 year old man is the first time I understood what a P&L was. And I was looking through it and I'm just like, we could go platinum and we would still be in the red. That's right. And by the way, not every artist is meant to build an independent business. Because not every artist is an entrepreneur. Some people want to get in a studio, have a song written for them, Rec sing A it. recording artist. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it takes a really, really strong team. You know, shout out to Brittany, Brando, Rory. I mean, everyone. And, and busting the pie down and making sure that people are incentivized long term. Uh, well, I think what, what I hear you saying, and, and we've talked about this with other artists, um, is that most of the record deals mm. that people get are really recording deals they're not business deals or small business deals right. right um and that's why you hear different things joint ventures these other you know other type of things so a lot of people are literally just a recording artist your job is to show up and record material they pay you something you may or may not own what you record right. whatever that relationship is also, most artists don't know how to run a business and don't even know that they need to be thinking about touring and merch and creating an experience that they could, you know, uh, uh, get deep engagement from a fan base beyond what's going on virtually, right? And there's some artists that are better suited 
to just show up, make the music, make that person. There's no yeah. shame in that yeah. either. Yeah. At there's all. There's no so shame in different. that. There's everything is so different. I think every situation is different. That's right. Some yeah. artists are better independent and running their own business. Some artists so need to be yeah. managed, directed. Put some, in the machine. You know, some <laughs> yes. people need to be put in yes, the machine. For sure. for sure. You also have the experience and education. You've been on both sides. So you now you can make sure you can guide the group in the way that you it's know, a gift works. and a curse, though, Laura. It's like, you know, part of it, you're, you know, super jaded because you're looking into, like, all you you know almost a little too much behind the curtain. I could see that. And um, yeah. it's challenging. You want to put together a great tour, and you're even when you're doing 2,000-cap rooms, and you're losing a quarter million dollars. Like, that conversation is hard to have with your business partners. Like, we want to have four dancers and visuals, and we want to have front of house. Like, trying to understand each role. Uh, sometimes I do wish I could just step in and close my brain to that stuff and just be the I'm singer honest, of yeah. the group, you yeah. know? But once again, it goes back to some people want to have creative ownership and we really like agency over our vision, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Have you gotten to the place now where you're having, because you have a P&L, because you have a touring business, because you're selling merch, to where you're actually not sitting, I mean, you're sitting down with investors now. Mm. You're sitting down with, you know, instead of taking a bad business loan from a record label, you could actually, a lot of people don't realize, you got your, your, you have projections now. You could go sit down and get a small business loan, right? Because now you have, we have invoices. Listen, you show up and you're like, look, last year we made X amount of dollars. Right. Here was our profits. And we have, you know, bank accounts, credit statements. You know what I'm saying? You could actually go. 100%. Shark tank. Yeah. Yeah. Straight Shark Tank. Please get us on Shark Tank. That'd be that's a dream. Yeah. <laughs> but I, are you guys at, are you guys having those convos about how the the business grows and who the investors will be? I think so. Yeah. You know, and maybe not with Shark Tank, but um, <laughs> no, yeah. No. You know, it's once again, it just goes back to now that you know we're putting the onus on us and our team to deliver on that level because we're newly independent too brand new this is the first yeah, independent project newly independent so like shout out to stem they gave us enough money to because we're like writing producing recording everything ourselves but when you want to shoot a video it's like well now all of a sudden is it worth it to shoot 30 grand on a video that's going to get a couple hundred thousand views or is that better invested in Homo. wait now stem what is stem stem's an incredible distribution company um they've just built an awesome tech product to where is that the stem player no, it's not the stem player. Oh. It's uh, think of it like an alternative to ADA or Caroline okay. or um, you know any of the other major distributors, except they're not owned by one of the three majors. They give you so you distribute to them. You cut a deal. They do the tech they do, they do physical and digital. They can help. They they go above and beyond their means. So, for example, if Val and I put out a song together and we have people on that song that we want to give splits to it immediately distributes those splits after recouping, let's say you spent a hundred grand. Once you pay them back their small percentage, it distributes on, on your behalf so you can bypass having a business manager. It's very artist friendly. Got it, okay. Yeah. So, so it's almost like Nirvana. digital contracts, digital distribution, like a dashboard for you guys as, a, as your business. You love way, it, right? man. It's like the, it's, uh, the UI is super friendly. Yeah. And the people are responsive. They treat you like proper partners, not this like fake shit of, you know, um, we're partners, but I basically own you and you work for me. Right, 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 right. It's true right. partnership. Grab a mic, Rory. What'd well, you no, say? I was just saying, Brent Files is like the face of STEM. STEM Got it. Also, oh, Frank. <laughs> when Frank put out Blonde, that it was, was through STEM. STEM. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. All right. I love um, it. And, and Brent's doing great. Absolutely. He's phenomenal. And I, I don't know if you know, Frank's doing great too. Really? Frank Ocean does a good job. Yeah, he's been done well. Um, what's your guys, if you don't mind me asking, <laughs> this feels very forward, but uh, what's your guys' ethnic backgrounds? I am black and Russian. Black and Russian. Very, yeah. You're New York. Yeah, Throwing. I'm basically in New York. I look Puerto Rican, so you know I get yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, how, yeah, but Puerto that's how our mixed kids get. Yo, black yeah. Russian look Puerto Rican. That's just New yeah, York, right I'm there. I'm literally Puerto Rican. That's it. People walk up to you speaking Spanish all the time. All the that's right. time. And then they're disappointed when you don't speak Spanish. Uh, no hablo mucho español, pero She's strapped. You know what I'm saying, Bradley? I'm from New York. <laughs> and you? I'm Iranian. Nice. Yeah. And you're from, again, L.A. Yeah, I grew up LA. in L.A. That's right. You're right. Uh, who else is Iranian? Uh, isn't uh, Snow Allegra? Shout out to Snow. Seb Deliza is an incredible Iranian yeah. artist. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of us quietly, you know, making moves. Were you rooting for the uh, for the squad? For the, for the, for the World Cup? It was a little Cup? heartbreaking. 
Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But listen, those players. So question. Mm. This is the question, because and I haven't heard much about it. Obviously, those players on that World Cup team made sure that they were yeah. vocal about what they didn't like that was going on in Iran. Mm. What happens to those players now? Like, because do everybody's kind of like, yo, are they good? Like, do they need to defect and go somewhere else? Are they safe? And I and nobody it, can help. Or them. is this question above your pay grade? I think it's just like there's like a level of sensitivity to it. Um, you know, obviously my parents immigrated from there, right? And like they have a wild history. Like my dad's first wife was executed. My uncle was executed. You know, just for speaking out against shit that's going on in the country, right? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was ruled and it's still ruled by an iron hand, right. iron fist. So really archaic. And it's it's challenging to speak out against it because I still have family there. Right. I mean, basically all my family is there. Um, so it's a complex relationship. But you do you, you don't feel because look as Americans, right? We're gonna talk shit about our government. It's not the people; it's the government, right? Absolutely. 100%. Right. Same thing when we go in on Israel up here. We're like we're not talking about people the, who the, live the, in Israel. We're talking about a shitty asshole government. You know yeah, what I'm saying? 100%. And people doing governmental things. But the difference is. And this is the th you and I talk about this all the time. And not that you're not the most critical person I know of the United States, but the one thing that people don't appreciate about the United States is you could speak about about how shitty it is as much as you want. You have to actually worry about the well being of your family if you speak out. Oh, so that, and that's it's what you're different, saying. That's, big that's, different. Very that's, different. That's kind of what I'm saying. So right, to means. give you context, yeah. my dad hasn't been back for since I was 33 years. Right. Right. Literally. So still a lot of fond memories and things you love about the place, but it's like I said. Culturally speaking. I've, culturally never, speaking. I've never been able to go. Oh, you never even The gone, closest I've gone to Iran, well, I'm not allowed. The closest I've gone to Iran is Istanbul. And then I went to uh, Georgia. I flew my cousins for the first time to meet them in Georgia. Not Atlanta, but Georgia. Georgia, yeah, yeah, Georgia. Yeah. country. <laughs> um, Fascinating. Right, do you get a lot of love from like the Persian community in LA and generally? We've seen a lot of, especially women, come to our shows in hijabs. Oh, yeah, we've seen hijabs in their shows. Um, but truthfully, until very recently, like I was on private and I kind of just kept to myself. So yeah, it's coming out of his show. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm trying to. I think with everything happening, it's important for me to um, just right. some representation because growing right. up, we didn't have yeah, that. Absolutely. Facts. Yeah. And Valley, how uh, how Russian are you? My mom is Russian. And like Russian, Russian, like She's first family in generation. Brighton, like how, what what level of Russian are we talking about? She's first generation. Um, well, actually, no. She's second generation. Her parents uh, lived in upstate New York. Got it. And their parents are from Belarus. Wow, Belarus. Belarus. Yeah. Belarus. Uh, so, yeah, she's Russian. And then my dad's Nigerian and Native American, actually. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you, you're... That, see, that's an exciting 23 and me. That's not like Rory's. Like, you look at Lo Rory's 23 and me. Uh, uh, it's just uh, white. Why you had to come from you Rory? To, what about yours? You need to accept me into the tribe. I got my 23 and me back. I'm 97% Irish. I'm 3% Jewish. Wow. Well, wow. I would love a Jew named Rory. I would love it. I, I, oh, that's great. But uh, so Valley split time between the Bronx and the most famous building in Manhattan, my, in my opinion. Yeah. Manhattan Plaza, which Alicia Keys is from her yep. building. Yep. Samuel Jackson did security. Terrence Howard. Yeah. Um, Donald Faison. La Larry David. Kramer lived in the building. Larry it's David. the yeah. most yeah. incredible building in the city. Wait, where opinion. is it exactly? 40, 43rd and 9th. 43rd and 9th. There's two buildings. Yeah. One's 43rd 40th. and 10th. I still yeah. haven't gone. I, I need to go with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we moved there when I was in fourth grade. Wow. And that was like a game changer. Yeah. In what way? Well, it was safer okay. than some of the other neighborhoods I was living in. And there's a community there of artists because yeah. it's an artist housing. Right. So everyone in that building is in the arts, whether they're a musician, an actor, a director. So you're around your tribe, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that that's why I'm the way I am. I, my piano teacher was Alicia Keys' piano teacher. Right. So, wow, you know, crazy. like Donald Faison would come on with his kids. We'd play basketball. Like... That's just the childhood I had, luckily, in Manhattan, which I can't say happens for a lot of people, right. a lot You're of artists. Blessed. You and You're blessed. And did your parents move there intentionally? My mom, like, yeah, you have to go on a waiting list. Yeah. And it took my mom six years to get in. Wow. wow. And before that, we were just, like, jumping from apartment right. to apartment. You know how it is and, like, rent and all that shit. We were in studios. But then when we finally got on the list, it was a one-bedroom apartment. My mom kissed the floor. Like, she was literally crying. She's like, this is going to change our lives. And then That's I went so to dope. LaGuardia. So it was like, that was a big moment, I think, moving to Hell's Kitchen, for sure. That's so That's dope. dope. That's, yeah, That's dope, really so. cool. Emotional Oranges, it's been a pleasure.
Uh, new project Zod, tonight. Valley. New yeah. project. The Juice Three. Independent. Independent. First independent project. First of many. We're First doing. Of many. Yeah, we're doing three in the next year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we're gonna go up to like a hundred and four. Wow. Yeah. You just gonna keep rolling them out. I don't even know the what juice, the juice one hundred four. Like, no. But we gonna do it. There's an L and a V. There's definitely an M in there. There's an M. There's definitely an M. There's an M. There's an M. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Yo, it's not uh, Valley. You guys tee it up. You do the DJ thing. Introduce the single, and you know, let's play it. Slide all night. Slide all night. Yeah, this is uh, some you know new jack swing, new edition inspired R and B. Shout out to my brother Dante helping produce the whole shit. I love Let's Dante. Go. Slide all night. We finally a hot ninety seven. You know we gonna Yummy. play that shit right now. This what New York sound like. You know what I'm saying? I'm an outside man.